Hey eBayers, it's Suzanne A. Wells and it's time for my monthly sales update video. Before I get into the video, I want to go ahead and give you my official statement on the issue that's been going on with item specifics. A lot of you have commented on this or emailed me, so here's my statement. I am waiting to see what solutions eBay may offer in the coming days. I feel that waiting for a solution is a wiser course of action than jumping the gun and spending hours and hours doing work that may not be necessary. I've been selling on eBay a long time and when these things happen sometimes we can react too quickly before a solution is announced. This happened back in around maybe 2007-2008 when eBay started playing with all of the clothing categories, subcategories, splitting out like toddler, baby, little girls and boys, all of that. And eventually it gets straightened out. I'm choosing not to participate in this hype surrounding this issue. It's just not productive and it's not good for morale. There's enough panic going on about this right now and enough time has been wasted discussing it. So my best advice is to keep moving forward, doing things you can control, stay focused on your business, and see if eBay responds with any solutions. And really, this is going to work itself out. Every time this happens, the eBay community goes a little berserk and these things just work themselves out they get straightened out so I always err on the side of caution and I'm just not going to participate in this hype because it's just not good for anybody and it's a waste of our time so moving forward let's talk about my sales update these sales are from September 15th to October 14 2019 and Next year, starting in January, the dates for my sales updates will be for the entire month. I kind of started this in the middle of the month uh, earlier this year when I started doing these. So um, that's why the dates are like the 15th to the 14th. So 2020 will be showing the exact month from the first till the end of the month and it'll make more sense. But I'm just finishing out the year this way. If you're new to these videos or just don't know, these sales are taken from my eBay store, Atlanta Golf Shop. I have been selling on eBay since 2003 and I have sold thousands and thousands of items. So I did set up this eBay store as a teaching store. I started selling on this store back when I began eBay and as my mentoring business evolved, I made this into a teaching store so people could see how the average person does this and look at how I do things as far as taking photographs, writing titles, all of that kind of stuff. So as far as the numbers that are explained in this video, I'm going to refer you to this video about bookkeeping so that you'll understand how I'm getting these numbers. Every single month I get people telling me your numbers are wrong. How can your profit be that? And some of you aren't realizing the shipping discounts can be up to 40%. So um, you get a little bit of a credit on that sometimes or it could be a lot. So please check the video about how profit is calculated before you assume that it's incorrect. Watchers don't matter, views don't matter, items can sell in minutes, hours, months, or years. So just take that as a given and just keep moving forward. So let's get into the items that I sold. This is a Talbot's wrap skirt. I paid $3.18 for this. It sold for full price, $34.97. Profit on this item was $27.94. This is a pair of Clark's women's shoes. I paid $5 for these, took an offer of $28. Profit was $20.16. 
I picked up these because they were a larger size and they are a comfort style shoe and the velcro fasteners seem to sell very well for me so a lot of things going for this item this is an L.L. Bean corduroy jacket. I paid $7.42. I took an offer of $20. Profit was $11.79. I'd had this one over a year, so I was ready to let that one go. This is a Ralph Lauren wool tweed vest. I paid $6.35 for this. It sold for $34.97 on full price. Profit was $24.32. This is a Chico's sweater, new with tag. I paid $6.35 for this, took an offer of $20. Profit was $11.60. Why did I take a low offer on this, even though it was new with tag? Well, it was during one of those times when I hadn't had very many sales in a couple of days, and I was trying to jumpstart that again so sometimes taking offers um, I call it a sacrifice sale you know just take an offer on something that is not all that unique that you find all the time just to get your sales rolling again so still walked away with eleven dollars and sixty cents profit so it wasn't a loss this is a Sue Wong cocktail dress I paid five dollars for this I took a best offer of sixty Profit was $46.83. I went in high on the price on this because this is a higher end brand that I've only found a couple of times before. And the girl that made the offer said she was a college student and she needed this for an event. And so, you know, I trust in the goodness of my fellow man. I was like, yeah, I'll give a college student a break on this, which I did. And she was very happy with it. This is a Pendleton long wool skirt. I paid $6.35 for this, sold it for $30. Profit was $21.59. And you'll see the keywords buffalo plaid. That is a great uh, keyword to put in your title. It's the red and black plaid. And just a little historical side note on that, um, back around the time of the Industrial Revolution where clothing was made um, in quantity, they, you know, plaid was very popular out west. And this color combination, the black and the red, was very popular. So somebody at a mercantile somewhere decided to call it buffalo plaid just to give it a name. The guy who named it had a herd of buffalo and he just threw that name on it that's how it got its name but it is the black and red uh, popular with like uh, flannel shirts home decor all kinds of stuff so if you've got stuff that's black and red plaid and you don't have a buffalo plaid in the title you might want to go revise those and maybe get some more hits on those items okay this is an Eddie Bauer women's skirt size 24 I paid $4 for this, it sold on full price for $39.97, profit was $30.40. This is a J. Crew dress, new with tag $108. I paid $6.88 for this, took an offer of $25, profit was $15.56. I don't know what was going on with this dress. Somebody else sold one just like it around the time I found it and they got $60 for it. Maybe it was the size. But I sent, I don't know how many offers out on this, and I just couldn't get it to move for more than $25. Oh, well, there's more where that came from, so just keep moving forward. Okay, this is a Talbot's 100% Irish linen top. I paid $2.12 for this, sold it for $22.50. Profit was $18.19. This was a coffee mug that was new with the tag. I paid a dollar for it, sold it for full price of $15.97. Profit was $13.17. This is an anthropology skirt, a beaded skirt. I paid $4.30 for this, sold it for $30. Profit was $22.44. I actually got this at a consignment store 
end of summer clearance I bought a whole bunch of stuff there one day and it all averaged out to four dollars and thirty cents um, so that is a great place to get inventory if you haven't thought of that consignment stores because they they only have so much floor space and they have clearance all the time because they want the hottest trendiest brands and styles but they can't hold on to their stuff for long so they do clearance quite often okay this is a lucky brand top I paid two dollars and twelve cents sold on best offer for fifteen profit was eleven fifty nine this is a Land's End tankini top size 20 I paid four dollars and thirty cents sold for 20 profit was 1315 this uh, skirt I know I had for three years you can tell the background is very different than what I use now and I can tell where I was living when I took this picture um, Ralph Lauren denim skirt I paid three dollars and forty seven cents for it finally sold for 15 profit was 1103 so everything eventually sells this is a Radley of London leather shoulder bag I paid five dollars and thirty cents for this at Goodwill took an offer of 75 profit was sixty dollars and eight cents and normally I don't do handbags but I always check them for what I call under the radar brands um, not the designer brands that are fake I look for other things that are still very good quality good name brands but you don't have the problem of them being fake so this was interesting because my goodwill has started marking up items that they think are expensive and they missed this one this is a, a pretty nice brand uh, it comes out of the UK I believe but I got $75 for it and the buyer was happy so it just takes some looking sometimes and just don't assume that your thrift stores know everything you've got to work around what they're marking up there's always plenty to find this is a Chico's jacket I paid seven dollars and forty two cents for this took an offer of twenty two fifty profit was twelve dollars and twenty cents so not great I'm getting more and more picky with my Chico's items and um, that's just what you do as you move along in this business is things are going to change and you've got to figure out what are your highest profit items when things aren't producing anymore then you just move on this is a Nike dry fit tennis skirt I paid two dollars and twelve cents sold it for full price of twenty four ninety seven profit was twenty dollars and twenty seven cents this item was free to me it's an Atlanta Braves trailer hitch cover I paid zero dollars for this sold it for eight profit was 760 and this was before the Braves very sad playoff game where they just got creamed um, <laughs> I don't know if you're gonna have much luck selling Braves stuff for a while after that happened here in Atlanta but anyway this, this was before that this is an Under Armour heat gear top I paid three dollars and eighteen cents for this sold it for twelve dollars profit was seven dollars and ninety two cents this is a Barney's of New York 100 percent cashmere blazer uh, men's I paid six dollars it sold for full price of forty nine ninety seven profit was thirty eight fifty two and this was not perfect there was a few small issues with uh, a little bit of moth wear I showed those in the pictures I explained it and it still sold for a full price so if you've got items that aren't perfect and you're hesitating to list them don't just get them listed explain the flaw and eventually everything sells this is another Under Armour top I paid five dollars for this took an offer of 15 profit was eight dollars and 75 cents this is a Talbot's sweater I thought this was really pretty with the design on the front it was made of merino wool and silk and just kind of looked unusual I paid two dollars and twelve cents sold it for twenty five profit was twenty dollars and twenty five cents this is a Bob Mackey cardigan sweater with a dragon motif 
I paid $3.18, sold it for $25, profit was $20.38. You'll see that a lot. Things I pay $3 for, I'll take $25 because that keeps me right around $20 profit. And um, to me, this is like the perfect clothing sale. It's something that's repeatable. You can get things at that price point. You can sell things at that price point, And you just keep repeating that over and over again. This is an Eileen Fisher jacket. I paid $2.12, sold it for $39.97. Profit was $32.58. This is a Buddha ceramic coffee mug. I paid a dollar, sold it for $15 on best offer. Profit was $11.06. These are Ariat men's western cowboy boots. Paid $7.42 for these, sold for full price of $69.97, profit was $54.43. This is another Chico's item, a open front cardigan. I paid $3, sold it for $18, profit was $12.58. This is a Land's End size 18 women's tankini top. I paid $4.30 for this, sold it for $20. Profit was thirteen fifteen. This is a Ralph Lauren velvet blazer. I paid seven dollars and forty two cents. Sold it for twenty two fifty. Profit was eleven ninety six. This is a Chico's top uh, open front cardigan item, almost like a vest. I just thought this looked cool, different, unusual, pretty colors. I paid $2.12, sold for full price of $28.97, profit was $23.67. This is a Willow Tree figurine. I paid $3 for this, sold it for $20, profit was $14.97. 100% cashmere sweater, I paid $6.35, sold for full price of $28.97, profit was $19.53. Eileen Fisher open front cardigan. I paid $6.35, sold it for $25, profit was $17.21. J. Jill uh, corduroy top, paid $3.15, sold it for $20, profit was $14.98. Chico's size 3 maxi dress. I knew this would sell for over $30. It just is pretty, pretty colors, and that Chico size 3. I paid $5.25, sold for $35 on best offer, profit was $24.83. Another cashmere sweater, I paid $6.35, sold for $20, profit was $12.84. I'd had this one about a year, so I was okay to let that go. This is a Miracle Suit uh, tankini top new with tag. I also got this at that consignment store that was having their summer clearance and I paid $5.25 for this. It sold for $39.97 on full price. Profit was $29.45 and this sold in late September so swimwear sells all year. You can see I've got several in this video. This is a men's untuck it shirt size 2 extra large. I paid $6.35 for this. It sold for $39.97. Profit was $29.15. Okay, this is a Talbot's dress with a butterfly motif. That word Lepidoptera is one of my favorite words. It's just fun to say. And it is the scientific classification for the order of insects that includes butterflies and moths. So I just had to include that in my title, just for fun. I paid $4.30 for this, took an offer of 30. Profit was $24.36. Okay, Carhartt. This is um, a free item. I found a bunch of these at my apartment uh, trash area. It's actually an unofficial trading post as well. People leave stuff out there all the time. So I paid zero for this, sold it for 15, profit was 13.85. This is another cashmere sweater. I paid five dollars, sold it for 22, profit was 14 dollars and 69 cents. Uh, this is a Ralph Lauren 
button front top. It had a $95 tag on it. I paid $3. It sold for $35. Profit was $28.09. And this is a pair of sunglasses. Brighton. The style is called Pretty Woman sunglasses. And what's interesting here is I went to a few different thrift stores that day and I found the glasses at one and then I found the Brighton case at a different one so I just put those together I don't think that's the exact case that goes with it but it made for a nice listing so um, I paid eight dollars and sixty cents for both of those items put them together sold it for forty five dollars on best offer my profit was thirty one dollars and twenty one cents this is a set of hotel travel size shampoo, soap, body wash. These came from, I think, Marriott Hotels. And I just had accumulated them. I paid zero dollars for them. Sold this lot for $18. Profit was $15.29. And the buyer actually told me that they have an organization that puts together uh, care packages for military, so that's where this is going. Eddie Bauer size 14 skirt. I paid three dollars for this. It sold for 25. Profit was 18 dollars and 38 cents. On my second store, on the same day, I sold a different corduroy skirt size 14 brown, and that was the only two things I sold that day were these brown corduroy skirts. On my different stores so that was a little freaky okay this is a Chico size 2 top I paid four dollars and thirty cents for this sold it for 28 profit was twenty dollars and forty six cents this is a men's Vans flannel shirt I paid six dollars and thirty five cents sold it for 25 profit was 1796 this is a cashmere sweater Paid $5, sold it for $30, profit was $21.76. This is a J. Jill open front cardigan. I paid $2.12, it sold for $22 on best offer, profit was $17.68. This is an item I had a long time and I thought I would get more for it, but that's just the way it goes. Nordic Wear heart shaped baking pan, cast iron. I paid $3 for this, took an offer of 12, profit was $5.44. This was pretty much just rehoming that item because I was tired of looking at it. Another cashmere sweater, I paid $5 for this, sold it for $30, profit was $21.75. This item was free to me, it was a mermaid wine bottle stopper. I paid nothing for it, sold it for 10, profit was $9.34. Here's another free item, a nautical signal flag belt, paid zero, sold it for 15, profit was $14.94. This is another free item, I was doing well at my um, trading post, there was lots of move-ins and move-outs that month. I paid zero for this IZOD shirt, sold it for 14, profit was 11.71. This is an express sequin uh, skirt. I sold this for $29, paid $5.70 for it, profit was $20.26. These are a pair of kids Sorel boots. I paid $4 for these, sold them for $34.97. Profit was $26.48. Another pair of the Carhartt free jeans. These sold on full price for $22.97, making my profit $20.78. This is a Worth brand skirt. I paid $6.35, sold it for $25. Profit was $16.04. And Worth is kind of an expensive brand. I just don't see much of it, but I thought this was a really pretty pattern and color combination. Another cashmere sweater. This one's a men's size extra large. I paid $2.12, sold it on full price for $35.97. Profit was $29.87. This is a Miss Me skirt. 
I paid $6.35, sold it for $22.50, profit was $13.86. I really thought I would get more for this because it was new with tag and it looked like it could be a theater or costume item like a petticoat or a prairie skirt, um, but I got what I got and moved on. This is a Free People cardigan sweater. I paid $6.35. It sold for full price of $34.97. Profit was $26.63. Lucky Brand tank top embroidered. I paid $3.18. It sold for $18. Profit was $13.17. And this is the unusual item of the month. This was a vintage candle made in Germany and I just thought this looked cool and unusual and gave it a try. I paid $4.20. It sold for full price of $49.97 making my profit $38.10. And finally this is a Talbot size 18 skirt. I paid $3.18, sold it for $20, profit was $14.91. Okay, had a few returns. I'm no longer doing free returns, so I didn't have any return postage charges, but these are the items that were returned during this time frame, and they totaled $100.21. The last item, the Chico's jacket, I just refunded her the money because she said it was very itchy and uncomfortable and she was so unhappy with it I'm just like you know what I'm just gonna make her happy and give her her money back and just not even worry about getting it back because if someone said that about it maybe someone else is gonna say that about it and it'll just keep getting returned so um, all the other items were relisted okay the numbers for October, I sold 66 items. Profit per item was $18.82. Total profit for the month was $1,242.16. I was down only 1.17% from the month before, so holding steady there. And the increase from January from when I started this project and really trying to regenerate my eBay store um, up 102.47%. So moving along well. Here are all of the items sorted in order of profit. If you want to pause the video and look at that again, you can do that. But I like to give you an overview. So there's all the numbers. Okay, observations. I sold 17 items at full price, which was 24% of my items, 49 items on best offer, which was 76% of my items. Items under $25, I sold 51 items or 77% of my items sold were under $25, meaning the sale price was under $25. My cost for those items was $196.56. Profit was $833.57. And I show you this data every month because some people think you can only make money on eBay if you're selling items that sell for a whole lot of money. But consistency is the key. You may come across things you can sell for $100 or more. But most people doing this business, the average person, it's all about consistency with all kinds of items. So if you feel like, oh, I'm never gonna find those items that sell for so much money, that's okay. Just be consistent with what you are finding. Or maybe you're in an area where you're just not seeing those high-end things at your thrift stores or garage sales. It's okay, you can still make money being the average person and being consistent. I mean, right here, over $800 on items that sold for under $25. Add that up over a year and that's that's some good money. So don't feel bad if your items are selling for less than $25. Don't compare yourself to other people. Everyone's situation is different and everyone can make money doing this. Okay, feedback. I had 66 sales. I received 32 feedbacks 
or 49% of buyers, obviously that feedback could be from items purchased in previous months. But I do like to look at that statistic to show you that a lot of buyers don't leave feedback, don't worry about it, don't message them and ask for it, just keep moving forward and let it come naturally. Sometimes if you message someone and say, oh, can you leave me feedback for my item? You know, they're gonna find a problem. Um, people just don't want to be bothered so just keep moving forward with that number of items in my store uh, 408 items as of October 14th I'm down a little bit I try to keep that between 450 and 500 so time to get busy on that for fourth quarter what changed during this time period I'm really still trying to diversify what I'm selling and I went back and looked at all the different subcategories my items are in. Now these are just the sold items, not the listed items. And I've got items across 23 subcategories. Yes, a lot of them are clothing, but you can see they're different clothing categories. But then I've got other items, home decor, health and beauty, kitchen, and I really believe that diversifying will help you make more money. I've seen that myself, but we all gravitate towards what we like to sell. And you shouldn't be selling stuff you hate to list. People email me and they're like, oh, I hate listing clothing and I don't want to. And I'm like, you don't have to. There's plenty of other things you can sell. That's just what I like doing. I enjoy it. So sometimes we gravitate more towards what we're comfortable with and what we like but I'm showing you here that the challenge for me is also pushing myself out of my comfort zone and you've seen in the video all the different kinds of things I sold in different categories. Okay takeaways from this video. Diversify. I already gave you that speech. Keep learning as you go. Keep improving. The longer you do this business the better you're going to get at it and it just takes time. Hey, takeaways. There is no quick fix tool or app that will magically help sell your items. I get this question all the time, especially when new things come out. Um, you know, what can I do immediately to improve my sales? And it's really, it's just a cocktail of a whole bunch of different things you have to keep doing all the time over time. This business takes time, practice, and persistence. And if you're tracking your profit over time, give it at least 12 months to see how it goes. Um, some of you don't track your profit at all, and that's a dangerous thing because you really want to look at the numbers. Numbers don't lie. And don't look at your average sale price. Look at your profit. If you're getting stuff for 50 cents or a dollar and you're selling it for 15, um, your average sale price is going to be pretty low. It doesn't matter. You want to look at your profit. That's what you're keeping. That's what you're using to pay your bills or save for retirement or go on a vacation. Don't worry about average sale price. It does not matter. And I always like to put a little quote in here. I've been listening to a lot of Warren Buffett on YouTube as I list and take pictures of my items. I always have something going on in the background. And he's just so practical. I just, I like listening to him. But he said, someone is sitting in the shade today because someone planted a tree a long time ago. And that's how you have to look at your eBay business. Think about what is it going to do for you in the future, especially those of you who are retired or moving into retirement or getting this business ready so it's there for you when you retire, you're going to see the fruits of your labor later. You may not see it right now, especially if you're new and just getting started. You have to build it. This is not a quick thing. And I go back to all the hype on social media with people who, you know, are telling you you can build this business in three months or even less than that. And I just I disagree it just takes a long time to get it built so stay the course be consistent it's like raising kids you're never done and there's always more to learn so I kind of look at my eBay business as my third child <laughs> 
Okay, I always give you an update on my premium library. As of October 18th, 2019, there are 221 videos, 75 hours of education. You can download the table of contents and see all of the courses and the length of all the videos so you can check out what's in there before you join. And last week I added the eyeglasses course. It's about an hour long. So for those of you that are looking for something that is lightweight, easy to ship, doesn't take up much room to store, and profitable, this is a great course that explains everything for you. Okay, we are at the end. Thank you so much for watching and have a profitable and productive day on eBay. Bye.